Hi everyone, our subject today is enuresis in pediatrics. Enuresis is urinary incontinence at an age when most children are continent. Nocturnal enuresis, the most common form, is the involuntary passage of urine during sleep. Diurnal enuresis is the unintended leaking of urinary when awake in a child old enough to maintain bladder control. Primary nocturnal enuresis refer to a child who has never been continent at night and is older than age five years. Secondary enuresis refer to a child who was successfully toilet trained for at least three to six months and becomes incontinent once again. It is often related to stress, a new sibling, school, trauma, physical or sexual abuse. Monosymptomatic nocturnal enuresis with no associated daytime symptom of urgency, frequency or daytime enuresis is usually physiologic and occur at least monthly in approximately 20% of 5-year-olds and in 10% of 6-year-olds. Non-monosymptomatic nocturnal enuresis is if there is evidence of lower urinary tract malfunction, like uh, delayed voiding, frequency, urgency, holding maneuver. History. It is most important to distinguish between monosymptomatic nocturnal enuresis, which is usually benign, and diurnal enuresis, which may have an organic cause. UTI is often associated with enuresis as well as constipation and incorporesis. The timing of the wetting should be determined. Children with the overactive bladder, pediatric unstable bladder, may have sequating urinary frequency <coughs> and urgency and may also have symptom of attention deficit hyperactive disorder. A history of holding urine until the last minute or enuresis associated with giggling, laughing, coughing, straining, or physical activity may indicate the cause. Polyuria and polydipsia may indicate diabetes mellitus or diabetes insipidus. Neurologic symptom or sign as well as midline abnormality may indicate an underlying neurologic disorder associated with the neurologic bladder. In children with nocturnal enuresis, a history of snoring and mouth breathing may indicate sleep apnea. Dry period, even if only weeks, pattern of urination, constantly wet pant, dribbling, frequent small amount of urine, dysuria, frequency, hesitancy, a dry when sleeping away from home. Past medical history, obstipation, which is severe form of constipation, constipation, stool incontinence, incorporesis, behavioral developmental history, toilet training history, medication, neurologic symptoms, and other medical problems. Family history, 60 to 70 percent have positive history of enuresis. Risk of severe enuresis is greater with the maternal history of enuresis. Risk is twice as high in monozygotic, monozygotic compared with the dizygotic twin. Autosomal dominant patterns seen in 50 percent, whereas 30 percent are sporadic. Social history. For whom does this pose a problem, parent or child? Effect on child, ability to sleep away from home without embarrassment, teasing at school, and emotional effects. Social changes, divorce, new sibling, household move, change in school, death or illness in family, and other change in home environment. Past interventions and effectiveness, attempt at treatment or punishment and its effectiveness. Physical examination, 
A careful genitourinary examination should be done to look for metal stenosis, labial fusion, or other abnormalities. In patients with urethral obstruction, the bladder and kidney may be enlarged. Hypertension or growth failure may indicate chronic renal disease. How to approach the child with enuresis after performing history and physical examination? Then a uh, patient need urine analysis. If it is uh, normal, we discussed it soon. Okay, nocturnal enuresis. Or there is there urinary daytime incontinence, abnormal voiding pattern, or hard stool fecal incontinence, which means in constipation, abnormal neurological exam, midline abnormality, patient need VCUG, MRI of the spine, differential diagnosis in neurogenic bladder, cerebral palsy, myelomeningocele, tethered cord, spinal cord tumor, caudal regression syndrome. Sacral agenesis. If there is uh, abnormal uh, urine analysis, a patient may have uh, UTI, diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus, hydronephrosis, hypercalciuria, sickle cell disease. If there is abnormal voiding pattern, is there wet after voiding? Differential diagnosis may be labial fusion, post void dribbling syndrome, vaginal reflex of urine. If there is abnormal urinary stream, consider VCUG, ultrasound of genital urinary system, before and after voiding, differential diagnosis, urethral obstruction, posterior urethral valve, meatal stenosis, stricture, urinary diverticulum, dysfunctional voiding, including Hinman syndrome. Is there squatting, frequency, urgency? Consider ultrasound of genitourinary septum, differential diagnosis, overactive bladder. Is there associated activity like giggling, playing, exercise, coughing, straining, waiting too long to urinate? Patient may need ultrasound of genitourinary septum, differential uh, diagnosis, giggling incontinence, stress incontinence, voiding, postponement. Is there polyuria, polydipsia, differential diagnosis, diabetes insipidus or diabetes mellitus? If the patient always wet, patient need ultrasound, VCUG, renal scan, this is maybe ectopic ureter. If the patient have uh, nocturnal enuresis, history or exam suggestive of organic etiology, if it is yes, if there is suspected obstructive sleep apnea, if it is yes, consider ENT referral, sleep study, lateral neck x-ray, differential diagnosis, of course, obstructive sleep apnea. If there is no suspicion, uh, follow algorithm for diurnal enuresis. If there is no history suggestive of etiology, this is uh, most likely mon uh, monosymptomatic enuresis, no associated daytime symptom, urgency frequency, daytime enuresis. If it is yes, monosymptomatic primary nocturnal enuresis. If it is no, uh, fellow algorithm for diurnal enuresis. Top tips. Examination should include the perianal area for excoriation due to itching may suggest threadworms, the vulva, lumbosacral and lower limbs, and the abdomen for distended bladder. Clear urine colorates well with the absence of bacteria. Dipstick test suggests UTI, type 1 diabetes, renal tubal, tubular acidosis, uh, like glucosuria without hyperglycemia and low specific gravity in diabetes insipidus. Reassuring the child and parent that there is strong evidence that he or she will uh, be dry in the future is often omitted but very helpful. Removing any punishment method at home is important. UTI in children with uh, monosymptomatic uh, uh, enuresis occur in about 1%. Despite this, urine analysis is essential at the child's initial visit. 
UTI is found in around 50% in non-monosymptomatic enuresis and therefore urinary analysis is an essential test. Functional bladder capacity is defined by the following formula. Age of the child multiplied by 3 plus 3. Low functional bladder capacity is frequently associated with nocturnal enuresis. Measuring the functional bladder capacity first void in the morning is important. Increased water intake and frequent urination during the daytime improve functional bladder capacity and nocturnal enuresis. Nocturia, defined as an amount of urine passed at night that exceeds the functional bladder capacity, is measured by weighting the bed sheet and at night and in the morning after wetting. Alternatively, signs such as excessive urine passed, soaking wet, early wetting in the first two hours of the sleep, multiple wetting at night, and low specific gravity of such as nocturia. A large proportion of children with nocturnal enuresis have nocturia. Treatment with dismopressin should primarily be offered for children with evidence of excessive urine output at night. In boys, posterior urethral valve is the most common cause of UTI. Diurnal enuresis or daytime wetting is involuntary voiding of urine during waking hour. It occurs in 10% of children aged 4 to 6 years and in 2% of adults. Labial fusion is common, affecting about 3% of prepubertal girls. The labia minora fuse usually distally, along a tiny opening proximally. The pocket behind the fused labia acts as a reservoir for which urine is leaking when the girl is standing or playing. Hinman syndrome is a non-neurogenic spine in, is normal. Voiding dysfunction caused by uncoordinated activity of the distrosal muscle, bladder, neck, and external sphincter, often leading subsequently to increased intravesical pressure and kidney damage. In vaginal reflex, girls, particularly obese, who do not open their labia widely enough when voiding, urine may reflex into the vagina then leak down and wet the knickers as they stand up. A girl who void normally but is uh, incontinent day and night should be considered to have an ectopic ureter with the duplex kidney until proof otherwise. While an ectopic ureter in girl usually terminates within the distal third of the vaginal introtius. In boy, it is usually terminate within the bladder neck or posterior urethra. Therefore, boy do not suffer from incontinence caused by ectopic ureter. Successful management of incontinence include dietary means, eliminating caffeine and orange juice, improving bladder capacity by drinking extra water during the daytime, treating constipation and instruction the child to avoid regularly every two to three hours. Anticholinergic drugs are very helpful. Red flag. Remember to ask the radiologist at the request form for, a request form for renal ultrasound to measure the bladder wall thickness. If greater than 5 mm, it indicates a bladder outlet obstruction such as a bladder sphincter dysnergia in girls and posterior urethral valve in boy. Google incontinence occurs in about 5 to 10 percent of girls, the bladder empty completely during laughter or giggles. It can be very embarrassing in public, urgent management is needed. Daytime incontinence is frequently caused or complicated by UTI. Ensure that the urine sample is examined for UTI each time the child attends the clinic. 
when a girl presents with the history of never gaining urinary control and underwear is always wet, she probably has ectopic ureta. Confirm the diagnosis by drying the vaginal introtius and inspect the area every 15 minutes. Reaccumulation of urine is diagnostic. Treatment of a child with night and daytime wetting should focus on a daytime problem first. When daytime wetting responds to the treatment, nighttime wetting will improve, not vice versa. Strong association exists between obstructive sleep apnea and nocturnal enuresis. Adenoid and or tonsillar hypertrophy should be excluded. Significant reduction of nocturnal enuresis is achieved with surgical repair of the obstruction. Remember that although parents commonly lift a child with the nocturnal enuresis, this should be discouraged as it may encourage the child to wet while asleep during lifting. Persistent dysfunctional void may lead to non-neurogenic neurogenic bladder which is characterized by failure of the external sphincter to relax during voiding. Children may end with the trabeculated bladder, hydronephrosis, and renal failure. Bedwetting may be a warning sign of physical and or sexual abuse. If physical examination suspects child abuse, have the child examined by a professional specialized in child abuse.